Um, we now would move to the to the third uh, present presentation, the third open innovation test bed. Um, we are very proud to have just four days after its official start, um, the coordinator of the Phoenix project um, in the nanopharmaceutical area, Nasende Günther Türli uh, from my biotech in Germany, um, in our room. Um, hi Nasende, great to have you here. Um, and it's you have a special um, situation, of course. Um, besides, have the born project also have an, a really nice um, baby came in. Um, congratulations once again! And it's even more impressive that you are up and and presenting today as the scientific coordinator. So the floor is yours. We are looking forward to your talk. And yeah, I hope everyone can hear you. Yeah, thank you very much for having me actually um andreas and thank you very much all for all the good visions yeah we women in science we must be tougher than every other i guess since we are also um taking care of the family members at the very first beginning due to biological reasons so thank you very much um today i would like to as andreas um, mentioned introduce you our very young project that started on first of march um the phonics project. Why phonics? Why we needed phonics? Um, excuse me, the slide is not changing. Yeah. Why we needed um, phonics? Because we know when it comes to nanopharmaceuticals development, taking it from lab to the market takes a quite long way, including many different uh, partners from uh, many different backgrounds. A multidisciplinary approach is needed to make sure that you can take one of your promising nanopharmaceuticals to the market. This was actually very good um, identified by the European Commission. That's why they introduced in the NMBP 6 2020 called the need for an open innovation testbed for nanopharmaceuticals production, especially under GMP conditions. Why this is happening? Because we know across Europe there are many promising lab scale proof of concept nanopharmaceuticals that have been, uh, that has been developed. We are actually hearing every day from the news. We are reading articles about those um, nanopharmaceuticals, which shows great um, effectivity and most of the time way safer than the existing therapies or the diagnostic agents or diagnostic procedures way efficient than the existing one. But it takes quite a while till we can see them in the market. Why this is happening is because there is a major challenge to produce those novel, novel nanopharmaceuticals in GMP quality and quantity that is required for pre late preclinical and clinical um, testing. Why this is happening is simply because in the pharma industry, the standards are very tight. And if something is working, usually they um, tend not to touch it to say, uh, not to touch it to change. Quite some years ago, FDA actually published an article where they said the potato chips industry um, developed 10 times more than the pharma industry when it comes to technological aspects. And this was simply because of the fact that most of the pharma industries do not want to change anything that is working. And it's very difficult to integrate those novel manufacturing methods in the existing manufacturing um, production lines. This is why Phonics um, came into life as an answer to a need that is long lasting in the market. What we know is taking one nanopharmaceutical from bench to the market takes quite long years. And what we know is in the beginning, we take high risk for low costs. But when it comes to establishment of um, GMP, scale up um, the validation procedures right before you can enter even the first clinical trials, the need for preparation of the clinical test material increases the costs dramatically, whereas your risks are now way lower. And what we know is usually the main pl players of this uh, nanopharmaceutical development, this is usually SMEs, spin-offs from academia or academia themselves, they don't have this kind of money to make sure that they can take it to the market. That's why there is an urgent need 
for affordable and advanced testing and manufacturing facilities to answer this demand. And usually the main um, bottleneck is taking these successful lab scale uh, productions to uh, industrial level, to larger scales, because um, after all, you need at least grams uh, of nanopharmaceuticals to be able to enter those systems. And you need to also have a um, production protocol that is batch to batch reproducible. That's why Phoenix is aiming to bridge the innovation, well, so-called innovation of value of death, between the science and the non-pharmaceutical products entering to the market. Here with this slide, I will uh, simply read the whole text because this is a well taught paragraph to show what we want to do within Phoenix. With the Phoenix project, our aim is to enable seamless, timely and cost-friendly transfer of non-pharmaceuticals from lab bench to clinical trials by providing the necessary advanced, affordable, and easily accessible Phoenix Open Innovation Testbed. Because this Open Innovation Testbed will be made available to all um, main players in Europe as a single entry point for a consolidated network of facilities, technologies, services, and expertise for all the technology transfer aspects from characterization, testing, verification, up to scale up, GMP compliant manufacturing and regulatory guidance. It is actually quite mouthful what I'm reading here and this requires quite some consortium. That's why we brought 11 partners from six countries across Europe together under this Phoenix project. This consortium took over the um, role of providing everything that we that, that I have just read within this slide. It's a four years project which just started four days ago and we have a total cost of almost 14.5 uh, million and a budget, European Union provided budget of 11.1 million. What is important is the partners that I show here uh, around the Europe map, they all have committed their own resources and already existing services to boost our open innovation testbed already starting from the month one. We already identify who can bring what and a service portfolio is already established to be able to start the first implementation phase immediately, which actually was quite good because we started three days ago, but the very first meeting for the work package uh, leaders took already place to take action to start immediately what is coming next. We are on a very tight sketch. What we are going to do all together is we aim to respond to current and future needs of the whole stakeholders from Europe and eventually globally after a, a while. And our aim is to enable these very promising nanoparticles coming from bench to bedside. For this reason, already during the project proposal phase, we knew what we want. After all, this open innovation testbed must be sustainable. And after the end of the project time, we are we will going to we will be um, providing service to Europe on our uh, services that we will establish during the project period. So we prepared all our work package like a future infrastructure organigram of this open innovation testbed. All our work packages are dedicated to different departments and they are all led by the pioneers uh, in this area. And these departments will proactively work for establishment of those services for the future um, um, future is that for the future service providing to our customers. It is actually quite uh, a lot what we are offering here. And as you can imagine, the supply chain in a nanopharmaceutical um, development and manufacturing is a quite long way. What we did is we identified all our partners strengths and what they can um, input to the supply chain um, at which stage. You see here a schematic representation of our um, current uh, um, current services. We will be providing starting from biomolecule analysis and its GMP grade uh, production. We will start from this till the GMP production of the uh, those nanopharmaceuticals, including their scale up, 
technology transfer activities, their um, numerical simul simulation to make sure that we can also in the future go for RTRT, real-time release testing eventually, and also large uh, space analysis. And we will offer also pilot and large-scale manufacturing of those nanoparticles. During the supply chain, uh, we will also support our future uh, customers for the, um, their regulatory part, because preparing a dossier might be painful for someone not coming from this background. Also during the development phase, knowing the right regulatory um, requirements and applying them during the development phase would definitely um, give us the opportunity to save time and money. And we will also support our um, customers and future end users, actually, uh, for this aspects. We will also have, in this case, single entry point for any kind of uh, end user, for any kind of research development and innovation, with any kind of research development and innovation activities to make sure we can get them from lab to market. The end users will enter from the single entry point, having a direct contact, one contact person. And this person eventually, for some cases, will offer also services in their own language. And once they enter this system, the through a direct contact person will divert all the necessary work to the related people. As you see here in the image, the customers will just leave the supply chain whenever they want to. Whatever they want to, uh, wherever they want to go to, it's possible that someone is only interested in characterization, and the other one is interested in a GMP uh, production, or someone has a very good idea and or a molecule and would like to have it from the very beginning screening till the GMP production. And our of OTB will be offering any kind of uh, services to any end user with an, any um, level of technology readiness level. Thus, we will ever, um, enable access to research, development, and innovation activities under one roof and manufacturing facilities, services across Europe at fair conditions. Um, this is something, this is very important because what we know is at the moment there are also different people, different institutions, different companies who might be offering such services, but they are so diluted and spread over Europe, it is very difficult for an end user to find the right person at the right place and for the right uh, price uh, conditions and also agreements. So by this way, we are hoping to reduce the cost for production and regulatory compliance. And what is important is we will be having a harmonized pharmaceutical quality management system for all the activities that will take place within this open innovation test bed. All the testings, all the quality, efficacy, and safety characterization, scale up, and GMP production will be made to sure that they follow the current regulations of GMP and wherever applicable for certain uh, services GLP. Thus, we are hoping to uh, accelerate the market entry by enabling efficient development stage. And by this way, we are hoping to uh, bring our end users way quicker to um, industrial applications. What uh, will this phonics open innovation testbed do? We already mentioned it will be a non-profit, self-sustained, independent legal entity. And this will enable the lab scale for uh, the seamless transfer from lab scale to GMP grade products. And we hope that this will create an ecosystem in the nanomedicine field, which will not only generate um, new businesses, new networking activities, but also will provide some uh, additional um, or generate leaps also for the healthcare system, also reducing the, uh, the cost for the healthcare system indirectly. Thus, we are hoping to foster a thriving economy within this um, ecosystem. Here um, you see actually on the right hand side a list of our um, services that are already available, but Phoenix OETB will be providing way large scale of services from not only on the technical side, but also for training, marketing, sustainability and regulatory support of those nanopharmaceuticals. And we will be um, actually um, we will be actually 
acquiring more partners wherever necessary. Our services will be established, service portfolio will be established by using five demo cases covering three delivery routes plus a diagnostic agent. And those are so designed and so chosen that we also can cover four different nanopharmaceutical types, these which are quite commonly uh, seen or developed over the nanopharmaceutical area. What we are going to do, once we establish our service portfolio, we will validate our services by making pro bono demo cases based on an open call where any end user can apply for any kind of service with any uh, technology readiness level so that we can validate our uh, services before the end of the project, before we start economically being um, available at the market. Additionally, we developed also communication, dissemination and exploitation strategies so that we can reach wide range of users across Europe and we are hoping to already gain customers during the project time, which we will be starting from the um, earliest stage of this um, project. By this way, we will be contributing to this ecosystem and hopefully we will also um, make most of the end users aware that we are there and we are offering those services. So this is um, the final uh, slide that I have. What does Polynix Open Innovation Testbed offer? We will, we hope to improve the European infrastructure and competence in nanopharmaceutical process development, characterization, quality control and production. We are hoping to increase the attractiveness of Europe as a location of choice to carry out those um, uh, processes. And we are hoping to improve nanopharmaceutical supply capacity and availability of a rich ecosystem for all related supply products and services. So thank you very much one more time for having me here. And I'm looking forward to uh, answer your questions if there are any. Thank you very much for this impressive talk, Nasende. Um, it's great to know that uh, these kind of structures are established now in Europe and that further progress is made in this field. 